The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to have a very, very limited week here today because we have a holiday on Thursday. That means people are going to be leaving on Wednesday and they're not coming back until Monday. So it's going to be uh, illiquid at times, but still very, very volatile. So... Pay attention, boys. The game is just getting started. Uh, I posted the chart of the German DAX here. As you can see here, we completed a beautiful three drive to a top pattern to the exact price, by the way, folks. It's backed off about 70 points uh, from that high, but it's still a little bit early uh, in the day. And if we take a look here at the FTSE, you'll notice that uh, this was not quite up to date because we did get up to that area and we'll be able to see where we are. You're absolutely right, Maria. Uh, it was at that 1.27 extension in the uh, S&P, very, very close. And the fact that we're leaving a 270-point gap in the Dow Jones uh, probably doesn't mean anything. You know, gaps are really, really not very much. And if you believe that, you'll be able to see, uh, you know, how often uh, – these things happen, and sometimes they don't. So let's pay attention. Okay, now, um, if you'll give me one second here uh, to tell you a little story, okay? Uh, first of all, uh, I want to bring this up bring this up, and, and show it to you because it's all related to what we're seeing in some of these markets, folks, and I just have to give you my two cents worth. And besides, it's my show. This is a chart of sugar. If you notice here in August of uh, 2016, I met Cy Monley as a, as a referral from Rich Anderson. Cy is very successful at his business. You know, he does all these farms. He has 385. Well, he's got more employees now because he's been, he's been bought out by Farm Bureau. Sugar is trading at 24 cents. Okay, it's setting at the 61% retracement from the high in 2011, the 50% retracement from the high in 2010. It's a 1.618 expansion from 2014. Uh, and when you looked at it on the daily, it was a three drive to a, a top pattern on the daily. And um, the open interest is dropping. Okay, now I'm on with Cy, and I, um, he became my student, and I, I, he was so wildly bullish, he said, we're going to 35 cents in sugar guaranteed. And I said, that's true, but before it gets to 35, it's got to get to 25, and it, the high was at 24.70 or something like that. I said, if it closes above 25, maybe it'll get there. I said, but this is one of the most bearish patterns that you could possibly have with dropping open interest. And he humored me, and I he had a lot of calls on, folks. And uh, these, uh, as you know, I said, if sugar breaks 2300 would you believe me? And he said, it will not be 2300 I meant $23 a pound. He said, Larry, he said, look, he said, there is no way in hell that sugar is going to break 23 based on these fundamentals that we have in the sugar market now. And as you can see, once sugar broke 23 it went all the way down to $10.50. Aha. Move forward. Here we are in the corn market. Everybody in the whole world, you know, wanted to buy corn. Now, in corn, we had a rising open interest because things were, you know, really, really good. But the reason why I want to bring this to your attention is to show you what's happened here in corn. As you know, uh, we had an incredible report here, uh, incredibly wild. But you'll notice here, uh, look on May 29th. You see that May 29th right there? Uh, in the corn. That was in 2018. We had that spike and the market totally collapsed. And look what happened when we made that 1.618 expansion there at uh, 14, uh, excuse me, $4.62 uh, in the corn. That spot corn, Dece is a little bit, little bit higher than that. But the reason why I'm telling you that, folks, is because it's all related to the thing called open interest. This is the number of contracts 
that people have that they buy and they sell. And when, when there's a buyer and a seller, that's one contract. So that's reported as open interest. Just like if you were a bank, you have a debit and a credit. Now let's just go forward with humor me a minute here. Okay. Let me just show you something. You might, have, you might like this. I don't know. I liked it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let's take a look here. This is Treasury Notes, all right? Now look, you see the little arrow there, the dark black arrow where it says May 28th, so the market's really, really strong, and you notice how it's gapping up? You see that? Okay, now I'm going to show you this because you see how the market goes up. That was in, and we went up, this is a weekly, a daily chart, so that's several weeks ago. Now you notice here, we've been up here for almost two weeks, and the open interest is dropping, okay? And I'm just going to show you now. Now, I'm going to go to the – this is all available to you. There's nothing exciting about this. You just go to the CME. Let's just do it the easy way. I'm going to do it the first way to show you this, just to show you the difference in what open interest really means, okay? All right. On May 28th, look what happened. Look at the big increase in volume and in open interest. You see that on May 28th? Look at June 28th where we are right now. You see that? You see how it's dropped? There's no interest in here. And look, and the next one is even going to be more apparent to you is because if you take a quick look at this, you're going to be able to see that there is a drop in open interest. Folks, their boys are the boy th this is both two-year notes and the 10-year notes and the the, the bonds also. Folks, the players are leaving the game. The restaurant is empty. There's no more food. This is going to be really bad when this turns. I know that boat's going to be heading out to 177 in the Treasury bond someday, and we're going to be going to uh, zero interest rate someday. I know all that's going to be true because everybody's telling me that. So heaven forsakes, it must be true. But before it does that, maybe they'll have a correction. Now, here is your 4th of July Christmas gift from old 24-7 TFNN. Take a look at this one, folks. This is the 30-year bond going back, yes, you're right, two weeks ago when it topped at 156.16. What's been the trend over the last two weeks, folks? Well, let me see. We had a high at 156. We had a high at 156.16, a high at 156, another high at 155.26. Now we've had these three lower highs with really nice symmetry in here, and it looks like we're looking at a price level somewhere around 153 if you look at the ABCD structure in this. So we'll be able to see uh, how these things are going to work, but by golly, I will tell you this, they're lower highs, and that's the one. 135 pattern that uh, Roy Longstreet and his son Bill liked and so keep a very very close eye on that now since we were talking about this and we're in open interest let's just take a look at what happened in the corn market and then we're going to talk about the corn when we get back because that's that's a wild one you can see back here on May 29th that corn market chart that I showed you that was May 29th what it did and now you can see where it is on June 28th with the you can notice the big move here in open interest. There are a lot of players going on in this market, you see? So that's a big difference. But, boy, we had some wild swings in those, in those grains on Friday, and the report actually was pretty good. But I'll go through that, and I'll explain to you how we handle it. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Don't miss the last chance to sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner at just $97 a month. Starting July 1st, we're raising the price to $197 a month. This is your last chance to lock in the $97 rate for as long as you remain a subscriber. And as always, new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Don't miss this last chance to sign up at the low rate of just $97 a month. Sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're going to talk here a little bit about the corn market and the report that came out on Friday. And if you'll take a look here, you're going to bring up a chart here. This happens to be a one-minute chart, folks, because this is how active, how crazy it was. If you notice here, the report came out and corn rallied 15 cents after the report. Okay? And from that level, it dropped all the way down to 22 cents uh, a contract, 22 cents, with the low being 144. Okay? or 444 from there it rallied 22 cents and i bought the corn at 445 and folks when i saw it hit four go up there and hit 22 cents and immediately drop 14 cents i knew it was in big trouble but i couldn't even i mean i couldn't even put the mouse down fast enough to try to put a video out or anything like that well anyway and i ended up getting stopped out of this but let's just follow this through here folks this is a one minute chart you can see the market continues down it goes from 468 all the way down to 426 a 42 cent drop in corn 10 percent look look down here where it goes limit down for 15 minutes you see those little dots that means there's no there's no buyers there there's only sellers pretty soon the sellers um, uh, are filled and then the market starts up a little bit and now now we're trading at 428 this morning you just don't want to touch corn here folks because this might have been a major top there's a possibility that even with all the bullish news and the fact that there's no corn planted, maybe, you know, someone's going to come out and, you know, do a, uh, you know, a major thing here. I don't know, but uh, that's neither here nor there. So I just wanted to tell you that sometimes these things are very, very active and they can't do too much about it. And when I saw that, it was a very frustrating day for me for two reasons. One, it got stopped out of the corn, but I had an order, a double order to buy the to buy the meal, buying buying Christmas meal at uh, 318, 
And uh, where does it go to? Even with corn locked limit down, the lowest the, the meal can get is 318.50, and I didn't get filled, and it was immediately rally $700. So I had to go out and kick my little stuffed cat that I keep in the, um, it's a little stuffed cat, folks, and, and that I keep in the gay garage. And uh, then after that, I repaired him, and then I was back, and it was okay. Okay, that, that's what, uh, that's what, uh, Christmas meal. I know it's not like a happy meal or anything, Mike, but that's just the way it is. Okay. No, no, Walter. We keep Walter in a riding stable uh, not too far away from here because he gives rides to all of the, the youngsters at the orphanage that's run by Sister Mary Perpetual. Okay. Let's talk a little bit uh, more about the grain markets. The whole thing in grains started with the wheat market, folks. The wheat market was the real the real smart one that, uh, that really had the big move. I wanted to bring this to you. The reason why I'm bringing this, this is what I look at, and I think it's why it's important to pay attention to some of these things. But sometimes you just, you're just not quick enough to act. You know, that's basically it. I missed this one. We went right up to a 78% level, took out all the highs from December and January, and immediately dropped 50 cents in wheat. Now, we're going to be coming down here to this 382 level at 505. The reason why we want to be watching this, folks, I will look at copper, Mike, in just a minute. Give me a second here, and I will pull it up right after I cover this one, because we still want to be looking to buy the corn, and we still want to be looking to buy the wheat. But what we want to do now is because of what's happened with this wild action, you want to wait. It, there's no sense you don't have to try to, you know, to pick out anything here, but we're going to wait a little bit just to see if I can get a very, very low risk entry. My original, <laughs> that's the sad part about this, folks. My original entry in the in the corn was at four, I think 429. I think it was at 420. I don't even remember, but it was really close to the low, but I moved it up to 445 because I thought it was going to be a, uh, a semi-bullish report, and it was, but it didn't uh, turn out that way. But that's neither here nor there. There's a lot of talk about the hog market, folks. The same thing we're seeing in hogs. We saw this all this bullishness that we had in hogs. And when we had that double top up here, here's again the situation. Why I'm a technician, you know, I hate to get on the soapbox and take a look at it, but that's not that's neither here nor there. All right, let me get up here and uh, – uh, there's so many. I got so much stuff going on today, folks. I don't know which is first. In fact, it's all working. Hold on just a second here. Uh, whoa, where, where are we at here? HG. Take a look at the newsletter this week in both futures and uh, the uh, the stocks, folks. There's a lot of a lot of stuff in there that's happening that that we were talking about. Let me get the the old copper up, Doctor Copper. I believe we're getting ready for a. Ah, there it is. By golly, yep. I was thinking the same thing. Hold on here. Let me get the copper up, and we'll be. Uh, just give me one second, Mike, and then we'll have it. I hope. I hope it's right there. Oh my gosh! Shut the front door and raise the rent. Bada bing, bada boom. Makes a higher high than Friday. Oh boy. Here's the. Uh, let's get this copper up here for Mike because, folks, here is the. Uh, 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 there you go. Uh, copper today hit the 38% uh, retracement there at 276. That's uh, that's usually uh, not a good sign. And if we take a look at this on a little bit shorter time frame, uh, we had a nice little three drive to a top pattern here. Just let me draw this in because I think it'll be nice to uh, to see it unfold here because that's what we had here. And I'll blow it up and then we'll be able to see this. Oh, shucks. This is not going to work. Uh, yeah, yeah, this the computer doesn't like this one. Let's just move on. Anyway, we've had a big reversal here in copper this morning, so uh, I think it's heading. You know, could be heading lower. Regarding the gold, folks, uh, we, we suggested highly that we were getting ready for a really strong correction in the gold market, and. Uh, so far, that's what we're looking at here. The $64 question is, you know, where we are getting ready to uh, pull back to, because we've, we've actually broken, uh, you know, $60 uh, uh, from the high down to the low. So that, you know, the harmonic number is 64. I would like, I would have liked to have bought the uh, the gold at uh, 382. We only got the 385. But as you see here on the weekly chart, we completed a major ABCD pattern in that. And uh, we went from 440 
all the way down to to 385. You know, so it's 40. That's 55 bucks. So I don't think this is over yet. That's my uh, two cents worth. Now, platinum during this move with with gold dropping 55 dollars, platinum went straight up. So look at them separately. That's about the only thing you can do, boys and girls. I don't I don't know the difference. So anyway, keep in mind that that's uh you know what we're watching here. So it's very very important to uh you know keep that in mind as you as you look at some of these uh, going through here um th this is could be you know look at you know what's so interesting here we got we got platinum uh, trading at uh, eight uh, what 800 and we got gold trading at 1400 that used to be uh, platinum was a thousand dollar premium to the gold and uh not, not anymore it's a 600 hundred dollar discount so related to cars i guess or whatever i'm not sure but uh, i don't trade platinum very often maybe once a year but not every year. But anyway, by the way, we have to take our hats off for our Miss Ruby. In fact, she's going to take everybody here at TFNN on a wonderful cruise and have bring your families and everything because she nailed something to the proverbial wall. And we want to talk about that when we get back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, we're saluting one of our uh, dinners today. Ruby has been talking about coffee here for the past uh, six or eight weeks, and when it was down around 90 cents a pound, uh, she was looking to be long, and today it's trading at 113, as you can see from the chart. We've got a big ABCD up here at 114, so that's going to be interesting because uh, it's going to be a pretty big pattern up here to see if it goes uh, goes through on the on the coffee so good job on that and of course you know there's sometimes they're good sometimes they're not David White just sent me a really great quote uh, from Confucius it says better a diamond with a flaw than a pebble without and that's true folks when I went to Beijing the first time in 95 no 96 I went to the home of Confucius it was a compound uh, big wall and big oak trees and it really it was a, a museum but completely run down he was not the uh, the the icon that you would think he would be I mean uh, it, it was just really sad for me to see that because people just didn't realize the importance of this man who lived during the same time as Pythagoras around 600 BC but uh, it was he was very wealthy and he was a you know confidant to the the emperor and stuff but it was uh, totally different than what I was expecting it was not like at the Great Wall where you got thousands of tourists and stuff like that the, think about the the Great Wall is they've got a special thing there that if you wanted to ride a motorcycle you got a 20 mile ride on a motorcycle on the great wall on the great wall you can do that and I, of course i had to do that because I, a i like motorcycles and b i like great walls but anyway i did do it and the great wall is interesting folks because it's 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 10 horses wide and the, what that means is that they were able to put 10 horses in a wagon and put it for that 2600 miles of that thing so uh Really incredible place. You, if you if you ever want something to do, uh, that we've got wonderful things here in, in our country, like we have in China. But uh, my goodness, they uh, that Great Wall is it, it's really really something, you know. <laughs> okay, let's move on uh, to. By the way, if you take a United States and overlaid it on China, they're pretty much exactly the same size. So they got the same beautiful things that, you know, we have a, the Grand Canyon, they have the Yi River and all that stuff. And it, it's really, uh, really amazing. But, uh, I want to get off the, the the beaten path right here, and let's move on here to uh, cover a couple of different different things here. Someone's asking me uh, what's going to happen with the stock market today, folks. I, I really have something sad to tell you, and that is this morning when I woke up, I found that. Uh, my my crystal ball had been broken, and so I have to do everything with charts. And I, all I know is there ought to be some resistance up here around the 2780 uh, level, which is the 1.27 expansion. Uh, and whether that'll mean anything or not, I don't know. All I know is we're seeing major completions in these patterns in uh, the Germany and also in uh, England and stuff like that. And uh, the Nikkei, but you know these patterns are made to fail, so we'll see what happens. Is anyway, we'll move on here uh, to see what's going on. The one good thing about being in Arizona is that I can turn off the uh, the politics, and I don't have to listen to uh, all the rhetoric that goes on in the politics. So I've been watching uh, Dodger baseball and Giant baseball and Diamondback baseball to, you know, keep my mind active to, to all the things that are really going on uh, with these things. Let's take a quick look here with the old bit because this has got a lot of things going in the news right now. You'll be able to see here that we went up and we made the 61% retracement of the uh, market that topped in uh, January of 2018, uh, just under 20,000, 19,500, uh, I believe. Uh, this is the the bit stamp. The futures opened at 20,000, if you'll remember, and they still have no more than 3,000 open interest in a year and a half. That's that's a failure by the Chicago Mercantile Exchange rules. Uh, that's just that should have been 10,000 or more, I would have believed, but it's not. And now, what's important is we made that 61% retracement. So, from a technical basis, and believe me, I I don't know anything about the technicians of this uh, blockchain stuff, but watch for a 38% retracement, folks. Let's see. We went from we went from we went from 3,000. Let's just rough this out. 3,000. To 1400, so that is 11, right? So if we take 
if we take 38% uh, of 11, just quickly, that's 4,000 points. So if you take 14,000 minus uh, 4, you should be some pretty good support at the 382 retracement at a roughly 10,000 in Bitcoin. Now, if it goes below 10,000, then that's telling you that that market is not uh, it's not nearly as uh, as bullish as you might think. So that's uh, that's really what the what the charts are all about. You know, we'll see. I uh, I I like buying the gold, but I'm not going to buy it here, folks. With that big gap, I I want to. I still think we, well. Here we go again. I still think we're going to make that below uh, 1380, folks. The reason why I think that, that's it. I think we got a chance to make 1380. I might be wrong, but uh, we'll see. And I bought it last night at 87 and made a few bucks on it. But that's all short-term trading, and it was just basically trading it. That's uh, that's all I was doing because gold swings eight, nine, ten, eleven dollars uh, like nobody's business, and those are fun to do. And just like crude oil is another one that, that's really great to look at. Now, if you want something to look at, and if you want something to look at, pay attention to the old Mr. Crude and Mr. Heating Oil. Let me show you why. Here is the charts from the 24-7 newsletter. And if you'll bring this up, you'll notice the little blue line up there just a tad above 60. That blue line came in at 60.30. And guess what we hit last night? 60.30. Now, if you want to do some homework, go and look at heating oil. See what happened to heating oil. See if you can find something like maybe a divergence. Like Mr. Twentyman says, defy human nature. Do the work yourself. I can sit here and flap these little chubby little cheeks of mine uh, trying to give you information. But until you look at it and prove it to yourself, folks, it doesn't make diddly squat. It really doesn't. You just got to be able to get in there and learn to do it yourself. Uh, it's just uh, just an amazing thing. Someone someone's asked the question about these four fears uh, that Mark has always talked about. Let's just just show you how silly these things are. And when when Mark talked about them, the way he did it was great. The first one is the fear of being wrong. <laughs> Take the sequel to that. In other words, I'm never going to be wrong. That's never going to happen, right? Okay. Second one, the fear of losing money. Take the sequel to that. I'm always going to make money. That's not going to happen, right? So that's going to happen. What are you going to do? The fear of missing out. Take the sequel to that. I'm never going to miss out. The Oh, unbelievable. And the last one, which is one of my favorites, is the fear of leaving money on the table. That's the real interesting one. Because if you take the sequel to that, the only person that doesn't leave money on the table is the person that sells the absolute high or buys the absolute low. All right? And that's the only person that I know is Maria in the room, Dudette. She's the only one that does it. And she only does it twice a year. Am I right, Maria? It, folks, those fears, th those are just things you, you, you have to get used to those because you're going to lose all of those things. You know, it's just, just really amazing. You know, <laughs> yeah, my ex-wife was always right. Anyway, that's a neither here nor there. You know, look at baseball statistics, folks. Look how many times, you know, uh, what's his name, uh, Babe Ruth. You know, he struck out like, uh, he had, what, 700 home runs? He struck out like, you know, 3,000 times or something. It was like seven, no, 2,000 times. You know, it was uh, re really amazing. They, they, when you look at statistics, if he, if the, if the strikeout to home run ratio is like seven to one, how about uh, someone that? Sometimes when you're in really dangerous situations, you can feel, you can feel that something's wrong. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, I want to put up the chart here of uh, the corn here. Uh, you'll notice this is a one-minute chart. You'll see where it closed at 431 and three quarters on Friday. Uh, we are now trading below the where corn was trading limit down at uh, 426. We've gotten as low as 424 this morning. So this market is not finished yet, even though it has supposedly some of the best fundamentals that we've had in 90, since 1993. Now, in 1993, we had the same type of situation occur. There was a very negative report as the crop was being – you know, very, very difficult to be planted because of wet weather. It got very bearish for a couple of weeks, and then all things changed, and it ended up rallying like uh, $2 a bushel or some, you know, godly amount. So it's not over in the corn, but what you got to do now is you got to wait. This is my opinion, of course. You've got to wait for the pattern that gives you the risk-reward that you're looking for, and I don't see it here. So I've got to stand aside and we'll be able to, to see what's going on. Thank you, Pedro. I appreciate that. Anyway, let's uh, let's just keep an eye on some of these things because I think it's going to be, uh, you know, very, very interesting. As far as these Chinese talks, <laughs> you believe what you want. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, they're, they're a master at... Uh, deception folks and they're great traders in the, the old in the soybean markets and stuff we've we've seen them you know use those pretty good um we can the hogs um uh, I, I really don't uh the hogs i'm, I'm not sure i i think we're, we're near a bottom they're mainly because nobody thinks they can rally from here but as you can see here this is for ruby ruby here's the hog chart this is august now if you're going to look at i'll show you what i would be doing ruby you'll notice on friday we had that little five-day rally off of the 73 we went almost limit up uh, at 80 and we then we closed at 76 that's not good price action now, if you wanted to look at one, Ruby, take a look at the, the Christmas hogs, the December, because you'll see the same type of a, a move here, but you'll also see the completion that has happened. So that means that those hogs should not get below 68. They closed at 71. Now, I don't know where they are today, but if they get above 75, then you've got game, and then you've got a really good chance to, to make a winner here. But I don't see a clear pattern here to be a buyer and so I'm not going to, uh, you know, to, to do anything. It just that if it gets to that level, 75, it's going to be a, a change in trend. Now, if we take a look at the hot chocolate, cocoa, 
you'll take a look here. You'll be able to see here. Oh, I could tell you a funny story about Coco, but then I'd be banned off of TFNN. Uh, you'll notice here we had that 61% retracement hit a couple weeks ago there at uh, 2575. The high was 25.95. We're down about uh, a nickel, 24.35. I believe there's going to be really strong support at 23.50 in the cocoa. So that's what I'd be looking at. If you get that, we'll be able to see see that uh, what he was talking about. Uh, Terry saying when Trump was asking China agreed to buy some agricultural products, it could have been because hogs are considered agricultural products, and they and they do buy hogs. They do buy hogs, uh, Terry, but not in the quantity that's necessary to make the hog market go up. We had the most bullish hog fundamentals God has ever given us, 30 cents higher when we had that Asian flu stuff. What did that turn out to be? Fake news. Hello? You know, it's time after time after time I see this. You know, I... <laughs> You know, it's hard for people that are in fun fundamentals, which I used to be, but when you have to explain to them that all of these fundamentals that you're looking at are on that little bar chart right there, that's all you got to remember. Because if prices are going higher, there's more buyers. If prices are going lower, there's more sellers. Now, if things are really, really bullish and prices are going down, guess what? Something's wrong. And what do we have now in corn? Some really, really bullish fundamentals and prices are going down. So something's not right, right? So what do you want to do is just wait. We've seen it before, and we'll see it again. Remember that what Sir John Templeson said, one of the most dangerous comments that you can have in all of investing is, when you hear this phrase, it's different this time, you can be sure that it's not different this time because the markets just repeat over and over again. They have for centuries, and they're not going to change at all. So that's the $64 question to you know pay attention to. That's what we're watching. So I watch the open interest only when we're at major breakout highs or huge volume or something really dramatic happening. That's when I look at it. That's when I'm watching these uh, – these bonds and notes and stuff like that. So we'll see. Maybe it's going to be zero interest rates, you know, but that's uh, – they can put that on my epitaph. He left believing there was no such thing as zero interest rates. They can put that on the old the old tombstone or little plastic uh, card that they ever give me. I'm not even sure how that will work out. Let's take a look here at the currency, folks, because we were due for a correction in the currencies, and that's what's happened. The dollar had major support here. Uh, uh, do I see a nice pullback in the indices? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I Well, we're going to see here. We're really close to the 1.27 up here. And I believe it's 27 uh, or 29.85. Maria, what is the 127 on the uh, S&P? Yeah, that's nothing for the – yeah, that's only – here's the, here's the euro. Uh, look at the euro here. We had a whole bunch of numbers up here at that 1410. We went all the way down to 113.25 uh, last night, 35 last night. And those of you that uh, like Fibonacci numbers, double-check that low because it, it'll uh, light your Christmas tree for sure. Anyway, uh, if we get above this 114.30 – then the euro is going to have some rocking and rolling. But until that happens, it's still in a downtrend. And this is a long-term ABCD, folks. It's taken two full months for that euro contract to do that. You see what I'm saying? It's it's very, very important to, uh, uh, to remember that. That's a, a real key here. Uh, oh, here's a coal. Uh, what is this? Uh, here's a sector. I don't know what uh, what's a coal chart all about here. Let me take a look at this, Pedro. Uh, wow. Oh, wow. What is this? Holy cow. That's a – it's a uh, – oh, the U.S. Coal Mining Index. I have, I didn't even know they had an index for coal. That's a little beyond my pay rate. Do they, do they have a coal contract? I don't think they do, but, you know, they got everything else. God, when I started trading, I think there were 29 different – uh, commodities that we can trade now, there's thousands and thousands of them, but uh, that's neither neither here nor there. Uh, pay attention to, to uh, the, the action on Wednesday and Friday, folks, because there's going to be light trading there. 
and uh, it's most of the main things that you want to keep an eye on. That's uh, the main thing that you want to uh, pay close attention to. That's what I'm looking at. The key level we were watching here, we'll see here. Anyway, boys and girls, keep an eye on crude oil, heating oil, and the old bondolis and the gold. Those are the key ones this week. Uh, the euro, too, because uh, we went down and we stopped at 113.15, you know, so that's down 110 from its uh, – from its high, anything below that, we'll see. Uh, the old pork bellies, they don't trade those anymore, Marshall. They gave up on them. So I love pork bellies. God, I could trade the heck out of those. 20 minutes and I got stuck in a in a, in a a short uh, pork belly contract when we were at Drexel. And uh, Jim would not get out of it because he had made the mistake. He said, I'm not going to get out of it. He said, I'm just going to trade around it. So we were, we were short bellies. And every day that they would open lower, he would buy them and then sell them back. And he was day trading and making money, but on the net basis, we'd still had that major loss. Two months later, they went limit down like six days in a row, and Twentyman took his bow and closed his money out. 877-927-6648 from the offices of Duke and Duke. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, I just got a, uh, an alert here that Blue Horseshoe loves natural gas at 225. I posted the chart. I think that's a major bottom in there. If you could buy it on a six-cent pullback, 
stops below uh, 210 or so, I think it looks like a pretty interesting one. I have to tell a funny story about Twentyman because he was a broker at McCulloch Oil Building at Conti Commodities when it first opened. And it was a beautiful building there in West L.A. on the corner of Wilshire Boulevard and Westwood right there at UCLA. And uh, his main squeeze, who he was living with, was Margot Grant, and she ran – uh, a catering service, much like, you know, remember the Beverly Hillbillies? They had one called the Beverly Caterers. But uh, Mar I don't remember Margot's, uh, but she handled the, you know, the, the uh, TV series. She had uh, the, uh, the Rockford Files, and she had a new series called Banachek. This was before Rockford. A uh, new series just came out called Banachek, which was George Papard. And uh, he was a really good actor. And so they would have breakfast when they were getting ready to do the filming. And so when they were there, we'd go down and we'd have breakfast while the, while the market was uh, trading. Well, uh, Papard, uh, George Papard is a class act. Well, the, act, the, the, the guy that played the chauffeur in that was Ralph Monza. He played the chauffeur. And Ralph's family was from our family in uh, Louisiana in Italy. And so I got to know him, and we were down there, and we were having having our breakfast. And uh, <laughs> George Papard came down to sit next to us. And uh, <laughs> Jim said, he said, are you one of the actors? And everybody at the table just absolutely laughed. I mean, he just couldn't believe it. Of course, Jim, you know, being as, uh, as naive as he always is, he smiled. And he says, well, I guess you're the star of the show. <laughs> Oh, a silver chart. Yes, you betcha. I'll get a silver chart. You're going to make me go back to work, doggone it. I do my best to sneak away from it, but uh, hold on. I get the old silver up. Silver's acting okay. Get silver down to 15 bucks. I think I'll be a buyer. I was a buyer at 14. I got to be a buyer at 15. Let's take a quick look at the old Lone Ranger's bullets, and we'll take a look at it. Uh, if we can get down to 15 bucks. Uh, we got down to 14, uh, 15, 19 last night, but a little bit lower. We'll be able to take a look at it. Clint Walker was our neighbor. Yeah, he lived in Westlake Village. Yeah, oh, you betcha. Cheyenne Bodie, you betcha. He lived in our neighborhood. His kids went to school with my kids. Boy, what a nice guy he was. He was actually married to an American Indian. I didn't know if you guys knew that. 877-927-6648. Talk to you.